Beloved friends, good evening. Today's first question is Manisha has asked, I love to read Osho literature, particularly Darshan diaries, in which Osho gives his words of wisdom to people suffering from some psychological troubles. I do not understand one thing, why so many times Osho says, hmm, good, that is good. It is a beautiful question. When somebody is telling about his problem, about his troubles and the master saying good, that is good. Naturally a question arises, rather than giving sympathy to the person, Osho is saying good very good. What does it mean? In life everything is good. Even the things which look painful for us, a cause of trouble for us, some discomforts and pain in the heart, the things which are giving a heartache or a headache, they are also good because they will wake up us they will make us disillusioned, they will break our dreams, they will break our sleep. That is the only way we can wake up, otherwise we will go on sleeping. Kabir has said, Dukh mein sumiran sab kare. People remember God when they are miserable, at least See this point, if there was no misery, if there was no pain, if there was no death, remember there would have been no Buddha, no Mahavira, no Kabira and no Meera. Do you know how Meera turned towards spiritualism? All the people she loved by the age of 35, they have died. Seven people died the most loved ones. You remember the story of Gautam Buddha when he saw a dead man for the first time being taken to the cremation ground. He came to know about death. It was a shock for him and the very same day he renounced the palace and became a sannyasi. He started searching the truth. Is there anything eternal, immortal? Is everything going to die and disappear? Just like a bubble? Death is not our enemy. These troubles and pains and miseries are not our enemies. Have you ever noticed the fact when you see a bad dream, a nightmare, there is every chance that you will wake up but when you are seeing a beautiful, comfortable, pleasurable dream, you will never wake up. So the pleasures and comforts make your sleep deeper and the pain wakes you up. When you are in pain, you cannot sleep. Spiritualism is the way of awakening. So. Everything is good. It may not seem good to the disciple, but the master knows it is good. I have heard a story about a king who has a very close friend and both of them used to go to the hunting trips together. The friend used to load the guns and prepare things for hunting so the king can do hunting. One day something went wrong, there was some mistake the friend did in loading the gun. When the king used the gun, somehow he blew off his thumb. He was very much angry. The friend did the mistake and because of this mistake he lost his thumb. The friend has a habit of saying, in every event, this is very good, this is very good. At this time also he said, this is good that you lost your thumb. The king became very furious. He said, no, this is not good. 
I am bleeding, I have lost my thumb, this is not good. I know you have this habit of saying every time this is good, this is good, but this is too much now. I will sentence you to jail. And he did proceed to send him to the jail. About a year later, the king went to a hunting trip again alone. Now the friend was in the jail. He went alone. Coincidentally, he was caught up by some cannibals. Cannibals means the people who eat human beings. So the king was caught by the cannibals. They were very happy to have a king. They tied him with a tree, stacked some wood around him. And as they were going to put fire to roast him, the head of the cannibal saw that the thumb is missing in the king. They were superstitious and they never ate anybody who is less than whole. If some organ or part is missing, they considered this thing is not eatable. So they released the king and let him go back to his home. When king returned to his capital, to his palace, he remembered of his friend who said a year ago that losing the thumb is good, this is very good. Now he thought he was perfectly right. So he immediately went to the prison, released the friend and he said, I am very much sorry. You have stated very rightly that losing my thumb was good. Now today I am alive only because I did not have the thumb. I am sorry that I imprisoned you. The friend said, no, there is no need to be sorry. This was perfectly good. This is very good that you imprisoned me for one year. The king said, how come this is good? This is not good. I should not have imprisoned you. The friend explained, if you have not given this sentence to me, I would have been with you in this hunting trip and today I would not have been alive. The cannibals would have left you because you were missing the thumb, but they would have eaten me. So this was perfectly good that you sent me to the jail. That's why I am alive. This is the way of looking at things. Everything is good. Everything is coming from God. The motherly existence, how it can be bad. So when Osho says this is good, he really means this. We should also learn this attitude. The second question is, Dr. Rajiv has asked, I am not interested in the world and feel a kind of depression. What to do in such mentality? I would like to explain you. This depressive tendency could be of two types. One kind of depression arises out of failure, rejection and frustration. When you have failed and unsucceeded, you become depressed, hopeless. Finally, this leads to suicidal tendency. There is another kind of depression, which is not actually a psychological sickness, what in India we have called it vairagya, the detachment. They both look similar. A person who is arising in vairagya, who is becoming detached, he might look depressed to other people, but he is not really depressed. I just mentioned about Gautam Buddha seeing a dead body, or all the loved ones of the Mira expired. They must have passed through this phase of depression, but this was not out of frustration. This is by looking at the facts as they are. 
बुद्धा वाज ए प्रिंस सो वाज महावीरा मीरा आल्सो बिलोंग टू ए रॉयल फैमिली एंड किंग जनक वाज ए ग्रेट किंग ऑफ हिस टाइम दिस पीपल टर्न टूवर्ड्स स्पिरिचुअलिज्म नॉट आउट ऑफ एनी फेल्यूअर एंड फ्रस्ट्रेशन द सक्सेस आल्सो ब्रिंग्स टू a depressive state but this is a totally different kind of depression in poor countries people are depressed because of their failures because of their poverty now in rich countries people are becoming depressed because of their success they have achieved everything in the material world whatever they could achieve they have gained they have succeeded they are the winners and now they feel something is missing they become disillusioned with the world this is something very positive don't take this negatively you are asking that i have lost interest in the world i know the questioner who has asked this question he is a very rich and famous person he has everything in the world a man can think of definitely his depression is not out of frustration and failure this is not out of frustration and failure this is out of a awareness you have seen the world you have seen all the success all the pleasures and you find still something is missing that something is your own being you have seen the world outside you have not seen within yourself you are missing the consciousness so turn inward don't take the, this depression in a negative way this is very positive sense go inside this will lead you towards meditation towards samadhi the third question beloved master why discipline and creativity cannot go together creativity means to do something in totality to give birth to a new future and discipline means something of the past you are bound with the past just think manu has given the discipline and the moral code to hindus 5000 years ago and similarly moses has given the code to jews 5000 years ago and adinath has given the moral code to jainas 5000 years ago and these people are living under the same discipline how can they grow they cannot become creative that's why creativity is against the disciplined way that's why all the creative people are rebellious people they are not the traditional people i would like you to listen osho's words of wisdom on this subject i am here to shatter all illusions yes it will irritate you it will annoy you that's my very way of functioning and working i will sabotage you from your very roots <laughs> unless you are totally destroyed as a mind there is no hope for you <laughs> discipline has been misinterpreted people have been telling others to discipline their life to do this not to do that thousands of shoulds and should nots have been imposed on men and when a man lives with thousands of shoulds and should nots he cannot be creative he is a prisoner everywhere he will come across a wall 
the creative person has to dissolve all shoulds and should nots. He needs freedom and space, vast space. He needs the whole sky and all the stars. Only then, his innermost spontaneity can start growing. So remember, my meaning of discipline is not that of Ten Commandments. I am not giving you any discipline. I am simply giving you an insight how to remain learning and never become knowledgeable. Your discipline has to come from your very heart. It has to be yours, and there is a great difference. When somebody else gives you the discipline, it can never fit you. It will be wearing somebody else's clothes. Either they will be too loose or too tight. And you will always feel within them a little bit silly. Muhammad has given a discipline to the Mohammedans. It may have been good for himself, but it cannot be good for anybody else. Buddha has given the discipline to millions of Buddhists. It may have been good for himself, it cannot be good for anybody else. A discipline is an individual phenomenon. Whenever you borrow it, you start living according to set principles, dead principles, and life is never dead.